Hey, Five Finance family, welcome to this edition of Flip It With Samara, another tutorial edition. So this series is all about showing you tools that I have created that I've personally used um, along my financial journey that I wanted to share with you, right? So we're not only speaking to small business owners in this series, but we are also speaking to individuals as well, right? As you will see along the series, there are some tools that are specific for small business owners, but also some tools that can be utilized by anyone, all right? So small business owners and just individuals who want to um, get better, right, along their financial journey and do things um, a different way. I am a um, strong believer that, you know, if you do the same thing and expect different results, that is the definition of insanity. So if you want to try something new because the way that you have been doing things has not been working, then I encourage you to use some of these tools that we will be presenting throughout the series. Okay, so last week we talked about the withholding tax tool. And so this week I want to talk to you about a business budget tool, right? So I know in the previous series we talked about things like financial statements. So we talked about your profit and loss tool. Um, we talked about your balance sheet. We talked about um, cash flow statements, but we showed you all of those things in QuickBooks. And now let's be honest, a lot of small business owners um, do not use an accounting platform, okay, in order to track um, their expenses. I encourage you to do so, right? But some of you do not. So at the bare minimum, um, what I do when I meet with a client, especially during the tax season, and they're a small business owner, and the first question I ask is, how are you keeping account of all of your um, business expenses and revenues? And they say, oh, I just use bank statements. So when they answer with that, the first thing I do is I say, okay, here's a profit and loss tool that I created use this fill it out and then this is how we will prepare your tax return this is what i'm going to use as support and the reason why i like utilizing this tool is because it puts everything in everything into buckets so that it's easy for me to read through and to make sure that they get allocated to the proper lines on your tax return okay um, so i encourage you at the bare minimum if you are not utilizing an accounting platform like a QuickBooks or a Wave or FreshBooks, um, at the bare minimum, please do at least this, okay? Um, but again, I'm going to always encourage you to use an accounting platform because that is going to give you more accurate data um, and it's going to ensure that you are having more accurate financial statements. But I know there are some people who are just absolutely not going to listen to that. <laughs> Um, and so I always have this um, as something, you know, that you can use as an alternative. Although, again, I don't advise it, um, especially if you are going to um, want to be someone who is serious about growing your business and whatnot. You're going to want to make sure that you have those financial statements. It's imperative, in fact. Okay, so this tool, again, is more so for people trying to categorize things, especially at year end for those who do not take advantage of planning throughout the year, all right? So without further ado, I'm gonna bring the tool up um, so you can at least see um, what I am talking about and how it helps categorize expenses, okay? Another Excel tool, so don't be intimidated. Um, like always, we are going to start with looking at the actual um, introductory page, right? So the introductory page always explains the purpose of the tool and then how to use the tool, right? So because this is a profit and loss statement and we talked about this in um, previous lives, um, I didn't go too in detail as to like why it is used, but it is used very simply to show the profits and the losses. So the income and the expenses of a business, right? Um, this should be something that you are tracking on a monthly basis, okay? Um, so please feel free when you download this tool to create a tab for each month. Okay, you can copy this tab for each month. Um, but it's definitely something that you should at least be looking at on a monthly basis. And I provided screenshots like I always do in all of the um, tools that I have so far. 
screenshots to show you how the tool um, is going to look before you do a deep dive into it, right? So now we're gonna go to the tool. So you can see here, um, when the tool is pulled up, you may notice that the month is the current month. You can always change that, but I have a little formula set in there. So every time you open it, it's going to go to the current month and year that you are in. Um, but again, you can always change it, especially if you're going to be utilizing this tool every month, right? For various months, you want to make sure you lock in the month um, that has these particular income and expenses, right? That you're about to plug into here. Um, and so you have your revenue. So these are your sales, your revenue, your income. <laughs> Notice that I addressed like all three uh, um, terminology because, you know, people say different things. People say, oh, look at your sales or your revenue or your income. I just want you to understand that no matter what people are saying, if it's sales, they're referring to revenue. If it's revenue, they're referring to income, vice versa, right? So that will go here, okay? Money coming in, simply put, right? Money coming in goes here. And then all of the money that is going out goes into these sections. Now, remember in the last series, I talked to you about cost of goods sold. So COG, cost of goods sold, okay, um, is what is going to go here. So remember your cost of goods sold is expenses directly tied to creating that product or that service, okay? So here, job materials, you see shipping, postage, um, and then labor, just a few categories. Feel free to add to those categories. You can change those categories if you would like, um, but this is where those dollars would go, okay? And then you have your overhead expenses, right? Things like um, rent, um, office supplies, whatnot. You have your overhead expenses there. Um, and then you have overhead expenses continued over here, right? Um, but these are where you would plug in your numbers, right? So money coming in, money going out. And as you go through this, um, this is a real simple tool. So, so simple, right? I try to design all of the tools to be very simple, not like the withholding calculator that we talked about last week, because I know that was um, a bit much, but <laughs> that withholding calculator, because the IRS does not make it simple to understand how to withhold taxes, it had to be a little more robust. Um, but I promise you the tools going forward will have more of a simplistic look like this so something easy for you to understand easy for you to digest okay um so again money coming in and i'm going to show you in real time like you can definitely change this as you change this notice that your bar graph is changing um and also your totals are going to be changing up here right so your total income would change as i change the total income here right um the reason why i put a bar graph here is because a lot of us are visual people and so when we see visually like how much expenses we are spending in comparison to our income then a lot of us are motivated to try to change that right um, it's almost becomes like a game. You want to see how high this can go and how low you can keep this, right? It's like a challenge. Um, and so I like to put bar graphs and charts in there to just drive home um, from a visual aspect things that you need to work on or you need to challenge yourself to get better at, right? So hopefully it does just that. And so if we change um, amounts here, you know, you can see that shrinking, you can see expenses are shrinking because we made that go down. Um, if we increase it, again, the opposite is gonna, ha gonna happen, right? This is gonna go up, expenses are gonna go up. So again, the tool is very intuitive. You just plug and play, seriously. That's all you have to do, plug and play. And so you have the ability to use the pre-populated category, categories um, these categories were selected based on how a tax return looks for a business, like the lines, the areas that you have afforded to you, and also keeping in mind some of the things that most businesses use, right? So um, it was a good marriage of those two as to how I came up with these pre-populated um, categories, but feel free to make them your own. Like I said, you can change these and you can make them your own. So if you don't have subcontractor labor, but you have something else that you want to put in there, feel free to make it your own. 
and just make sure that you are utilizing this area here in order to put in the expense associated or I should say the um, dollar value associated with that expense okay um, but again very simple tool very easy to use I think to navigate through um, but definitely something that you want to have in your arsenal especially if you are not managing your books currently in an accounting platform okay um, this will definitely uh, be a good start for someone who's maybe just starting a business um, maybe someone who um, your business has been up and running but you um, maybe your expenses are very very low very minimal um, and maybe your revenues are the same right so maybe you can start with a tool like this just to kind of get you used to how a profit and loss should look, what should be on a profit and loss statement, right? Gets you familiar with that term um, so that when you are ready to graduate into an accounting software system like a QuickBooks, now you're already familiar with the concept, at least, of a profit and loss statement, which is one of the most important financial statements for a small business owner. So, um, this will definitely give you like an introduction to um, a profit and loss statement and um, definitely give you more insight of what should belong on a profit and loss statement, right? Um, so again, just one of the many tools to add to your arsenal. Um, I hope that these uh, tutorials have been helpful and insightful. Um, at the very least, um, this tool will also be able, um, will be available to be downloaded um, if you are a member of our private Facebook group. So again, jump on over to Facebook, um, do a search for Cutting Your Taxes 10101. Kind of messed up on the name, it's okay. Cutting Your Taxes 101, Debunking Tax Myths. Okay, do a search for that. Um, some answer all the questions in their entirety, please, so that I can approve you joining the group. All right. And then once you have done that, then you will be able to download this tool along with the other tool that we talked about last week, our withholding tax tool. Um, and then you can definitely ask any follow up questions that you may have. Um, we will definitely be sure to reply to you because again, we're all about educating and elevating. Okay. And so to that end, we wanted to be able to equip you with some tools to do just that, no matter where you are on your financial journey, okay? So again, thank you so much for joining this uh, tonight's live, right? The, the uh, another tutorial edition. Um, but until next time, Five Finance Family, we hope that you all have a blessed and wonderful Tuesday evening. We will talk to you soon.